Well, hey, everyone. God bless you. It's Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And today we're going to be talking about overcoming the spirit of rejection. We're in the midst of an overcoming series, and this is going to be part one in overcoming the stronghold of rejection. In the next video, I'm going to talk about rejection in relationship to your self-image that you have developed over years. And so this is part one of overcoming the spirit of rejection. Now, before we jump into this today's teaching, uh, I want to just share with you that on Saturday, July 23rd, we're having a half-day seminar called Activate at the Healing Rooms in Santa Maria. And Activate is all about activating the greater one who lives in you, activating your identity in Christ, and activating your love for people that you encounter every day. So it's going to be Saturday, July 23rd. Uh, I'll leave a link in the chat where you can, uh, you know, register. And also, there'll be a link down below if you're watching on YouTube. Make sure you click there and register for our seminar. It's going to be an awesome time. So rejection. Listen, everyone probably in some, one way or another deals with what I would call a spirit of rejection. Uh, probably the greatest issue that I would say I had prior to coming to Jesus was the whole area of rejection. It, it helped, happened over time uh, from growing up in my family, and my family was uh, not Christians, and so we never said anything nice to each other. And so right from when I was very young, I started developing what I would call a spirit of rejection. And it just only was affirmed over and over. I went to school. I was bigger than the other kids in the school, and so I got picked on. I wasn't a cool kid in school. I was just, you know, somebody that nobody noticed. And so along the way, I'm developing rejection. Then, of course, I go into high school and uh, and junior high and high school, and I'm trying to have a relationship with girls, and I'm getting rejected. And so it's only reconfirming that I am a reject. Then it goes on into college, goes on into some hurtful things that happened to me when I became engaged to a girl one time, and uh, she left me before our we were going to get married to go marry someone else. So how many of you know that would develop a bit of a rejection in you? And my rejection issue grew to the point where I would call it was a rejection that begets rejection. What does that mean? It means that that I was so convinced that I was a reject that if you, you and I met each other, we'd never met before, I would talk you into rejecting, rejecting me within a few moments. In other words, I would say, you don't like me, do you? And you're like, well, I don't even know you. But see, I projected rejection of myself, and it also then reaffirmed that I was a reject. So by the time I met Jesus, I had this stronghold in my life of rejection. And it was something that I had to learn about how to overcome. I had to go through deliverance. And today, even in this video, we're going to be taking some of you through deliverance uh, in the area of a spirit of rejection. So make sure you stay on all the way to the end of this video, because I'm going to pray for you, and we're going to take authority over the spirit of rejection. Now, how many of you know that in Ephesians chapter 6, it says that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of, hosts of wickedness in the heavenly place. It's talking about evil spirits. And so there are demons, there are demons, there are demons of fear, there are demons of anger, there are demons of murder, there are demons, there are also uh, demons of rejection. And so what happens in our lives is that we can open up the door through just over our life, the door gets open and a demon of rejection or a spirit of rejection can begin to take hold in our life. Now, am I saying everyone here is demon possessed? No, there's nothing in the Bible that says that you, as a Christian, that you are possessed, but it does say you can be demonized. So here's what the Bible says, and what happens is this demon of rejection gets in you, and and what he does, he begins to establish a stronghold in your life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 5, Paul writes and says this, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God or through God for the pulling down of strongholds. 
And then he tells what those strongholds are, casting down arguments, thoughts, imaginations, ideologies, speculations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And then we are to bring every thought into captivity of obedience to Christ. So it's a uh, this spirit of, of um, rejection begins to set up a place in your life where uh, it makes you look at that everything that's happening around you means that you're a reject or you feel when you're around people you're being rejected we'll talk about something some of the symptoms of that in just a moment let me read it from the new international version version of this same verse this is second corinthians 3 10 10 3 through 5 and it says for though we live in the world we do not wage a war as the world does for the weapons that we fight with are not weapons of the world on the contrary they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to expose a stronghold, and then we're going to demolish it. So let's pray. And let's invite the Holy Spirit to uh, join us here. But before I pray, let me just uh, just encourage you to click share. Make sure you go to my YouTube channel, which is Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. I'll leave a link there for you to link, link into it. And make sure you subscribe, click the bell, and click like. So let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit to uncover and empower us to overcome and tear down and destroy this stronghold of rejection. Father, I thank you once again that you're a God who is real, you're a God who is all-powerful, and you have given us authority over all the power of the enemy. We thank you, Lord, that your word says, those who believe in me, they will cast out demons. And so, God, we're going to take authority and tear down a stronghold by your grace and by your power and by the power of the blood of Jesus and the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we invite you as we talk about this stronghold of rejection that you uncover it, expose it, and deliver everyone that's watching who's struggling in this area. I pray that in Jesus' name amen and amen. Can you say amen? Say amen in the chat or say praise God. Well, again, a stronghold is a position that the enemy sets up to in our lives to attack us from and to defeat us. And again, one of probably the most common strongholds that I see in people's lives is the area of rejection. Now, it's developed over time. It just doesn't happen overnight. You know, depending on your background, if you got became a Christian when you were five years old, or you became a Christian when you were 40 years old, uh, depending on how long you were away from Jesus or how long you did not know who you were in Christ, then over time, the enemy is going to work at developing these strongholds in your life. Now, there are other strongholds other than rejection, but I'm just talking about rejection today. So how does it get developed? It gets developed through the words that people say to us, right? You hear someone in authority over your life speak a certain word, like, you know, you're, you're never going to amount to much, or you're always going to be a failure, or I hate you, or whatever. You hear these words, and, uh, you know, uh, if you don't know who you are, you haven't established your identity, these words begin to go into you, and they're the building blocks of a stronghold the enemy wants to build in your life. Or you can have actual rejection experiences. Like with me, I had several experiences with rejection through different people, through not being picked to be on a team, or you know things like that, uh, where I began to believe that I was a reject. Or if you've been abandoned as a child uh, through your parents' divorce, or you gone, you know, your parents have gone through a divorce, you feel abandoned. This definitely is going to begin to develop this stronghold of rejection. Um, you know, there's hurts and wounds that we receive through rejection experiences, and these all begin to build a case in your life or a stronghold of rejection in you. Uh, eventually, what happens is that our mind comes to the conclusion that we are rejects or we are losers, right? Everybody used to do the big loser sign, right? And so then there's a point where we come to a place where we see everything that people do toward us as rejection. So if we just, I mean, we can just be walking down the aisle uh, in, you know, a store and somebody gives us a funny look and we just think, oh, they don't like us or they're against us and instead of uh, they just had a stomach pain or they have a headache. And so we then begin to develop the concept that we are rejects and everyone is rejecting us. Um, we are especially 
vulnerable to developing a spirit of rejection when we don't have parents or others that constantly build us up and say positive things about our worth and value. So eventually what can happen is it opens a door. Remember how Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock if any man will open the door. Well, it also says in Ephesians, it says that it says, be angry and do not sin, do not give place or open a door to the devil. So eventually what happens is as you have this compounding, uh, you know, affirmation, a negative affirmation that you are a reject, then pretty soon it opens the door and literally a spirit of rejection, an evil spirit will begin to come in and establish this stronghold in your life. Now, let me give you some symptoms of a spirit of rejection. Of those of you that are joining me, I'm, this is part one on overcoming the spirit of rejection. And so in this one, I'm going to talk about a stronghold. The next one, I'm talking about your self-image. So you make sure you want to watch both these videos. <clears throat> now, what are some of the symptoms of the spirit of rejection? Well, you have a hard time believing that God's promises are for you. you in other words, you now have taken it to where you believe that God is even rejecting you. And maybe you're not saved right now. Maybe you don't know Jesus and you are at that place where God could never accept me. God can never, you know, welcome me into his family because I'm a reject, okay? And so we have a hard time believing that God's promises are for us. Uh, we don't allow people to get close to us. That could be a good sign that you have a spirit of rejection is when you just don't let anybody get close enough to hurt you. Uh, when you read the Bible, all you see it is, it's condemning you and not and showing you what's wrong with you instead of who you are in Christ. So when you read the Bible and it's always negative to you, it's a good sign you could have developed a spirit of rejection. Um, you feel a sense of joy when other people fail because it makes you feel better about yourself. So you see people around you and they get in trouble or they make a mistake or they fall or they uh, get hurt. And you feel joy about that. That's a good. That's a good sign that you could have a spirit of rejection because you you're feeling better about yourself because somebody else is getting rejected. Um, you want to be successful so you can prove all those who rejected you uh, that you are a winner. So if you have this revengeful attitude in you, I want to be a success so I can show everybody that rejected me that I'm not a loser. Right? That's a sign that you could have a spirit of rejection. Uh, you live with a sense of sadness and have a difficult time just enjoying life. Another symptom is you're driven constantly to be doing or accomplishing things so you can have a sense of self-worth or value. So in other words, if you're accomplishing things, you're, do, you're constantly, I'm going to accomplish things, I'm going to set goals, I'm going to do these things, but it's not for the purpose that I feel like this is God's plan for my life. It's more for the purpose that this gives value to my life. In other words, my job or what I do instead of who I am is what's giving value to me. Could be because you have a spirit of rejection. Uh, you have a different, difficult time seeing good things happen through your life and only see things that you failed at or have fallen short of. So if you're always focused on what's wrong with me and how I failed, that's a good sign that you may have a spirit or a stronghold of rejection. Uh, when, you, when anything goes wrong, you always take the blame to yourself. Somehow it's my fault. No matter what's happening, you could be watching the news and something's happening in another part of the world and, and you think this somehow is my fault. Definitely you have developed a stronghold of rejection. So rejection attacks us on, uh, attacks our soul in all three areas of our soul. You know, your soul is made up of your mind, your emotions, and your will. And so when you um, uh, are uh, coming under the control of or having established, having established in your life a spirit, a spiritual stronghold of rejection, it affects how you think. It affects your emotions, how you feel. You can become hardened toward people and um, and and just become cold as a person. Um, it affects your mind, your thinking. Your thoughts are always going to who's rejecting me now, or I'm I, I I'm not you know I'm a bad person, and so on, or your will, and you seem to always be making choices and decisions that will end up in you experiencing rejection. If you're at that point in, in your life, then guess what? This video is for you. 
Now, again, those of you that are joining me, I'm talking about part one, overcoming the spirit of rejection. In this situation, in this session, we're talking about uh, the area of a stronghold of rejection. So now we've explained the problem. We need to go to what is the answer. What's the answer to overcoming the spirit of rejection? Well, are you ready for this? The answer is the cross of Jesus Christ, the cross of Jesus. You see, through the cross of Jesus, Jesus defeated everything that ever could come against our life. It tells us in Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 6, it says this. Listen to this. He, talking about Jesus, was despised and rejected by men. Did you hear that? He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace or the punishment for our peace came upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we, all we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone has gone his own way, and the Lord has laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. And so Jesus bore our rejection so we can bear, receive through the cross his acceptance. The cross is a place of great exchange. And so the cross has made a way for us to get set free from rejection. You see, on the cross, Jesus died, and the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6, we died with him. Jesus was buried. We were buried with him. Jesus was resurrected from the dead, and we are resurrected into a new life, into a new person. We're not the old person that we were. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. All the old things have passed away, and all things have become new. In Colossians chapter 2, it says this, and it says, and you were dead in your sins and because of the sinful nature and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ and forgave you all, our, all of your sins. He canceled out the record of charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. And this way he disarmed, another version says he stripped the spiritual rulers and authorities in the heavenly places and he shamed them exposed them publicly, and triumphed over them through the cross. Come on, somebody. And so Jesus on the cross defeated the principalities and the powers. One version says he made a public display of them, triumphing over them through the cross. So when Jesus was on the cross, he defeated these evil spirits. And not only that, he gave us authority. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But he gave us authority. So on the cross, Jesus became sin, so we might become the righteousness of God in him. On the cross, Jesus died in our place so that we might have a new life. On the cross, Jesus took our curse and gave us his blessing. On the cross, get this, he says, he was rejected so we might be accepted as sons and daughters of the living God. Somebody ought to put a big amen in the chat right there. So on the cross, Jesus took our sorrows, our sadnesses, our depressions, and our rejection. Come on, somebody. And so on the cross, he defeated the evil spirits that have controlled us and set up these strongholds, and he has given us divinely powerful weapons to destroy these strongholds. So on the cross, he destroyed the spirit of rejection and re released to us the spirit of adoption and acceptance and value. Come on, praise the Lord. And so through the cross also, Jesus has given us authority over the spirit of rejection, and he has given us authority to tear down the stronghold of rejection. Jesus said to his disciples in Luke 10, verse 19 and 20, he says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall harm you, however and he talks about that. You do not rejoice in that, but you rejoice in the fact that your name is written in, in the Lamb's book of life or in, in the book of life. So Jesus has given us authority. Jesus said in Mark 16, 17, he says, these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. 
So maybe as you've listened to this, you have now found that you over time have developed a stronghold of rejection in your life. And so uh, I, I want to, you know, if you've identified with some of these symptoms that I've named about that area of stronghold of rejection, or you're literally being tormented by a spirit of rejection, I've got good news because we're going to pray and I'm going to pray for you, but I'm going to give you some things to do before we pray. So that as we pray, there's nothing that will hinder you from getting set free and tearing down this stronghold of rejection. By the way, one of the first things you need to realize and recognize is, do I have that? If I have this spirit of rejection, do I have a stronghold of rejection? That's the first thing. That's the first awakening that will happen. As soon as you recognize that and you realize that Jesus died on the cross and was rejected on the cross, so you might be accepted with the Father, now you've uncovered the enemy working in your life. So here are some steps that I would recommend to you before I pray for you and we take authority over the spirit of rejection and authority over the stronghold of rejection. First off, you need to ask the Lord to forgive you of any sin that you are are committing or have committed that would give the devil an advantage over you. Remember that if you confess your sins, in 1 John chapter 1, it says, God is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So ask the Lord to forgive you. Number two, forgive everyone the Holy Spirit brings to your mind who has rejected you. So you don't want to block your deliverance with unforgiveness. You know, all these people that have hurt me, and maybe it's parents, maybe it's brothers and sisters, maybe it's, you know, a teacher that said something to you that caused you to feel rejected or or anybody, but as the Holy Spirit brings into your mind, you want to say, "Lord, I forgive them. They don't know. They didn't know what they were doing." And then what we're going to do is we're going to. I'll lead you in this in just a moment. Is you're going to renounce uh, using the authority that you have in Christ. You're going to renounce and command the spirit of rejection to leave you. That's right. And then we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to heal you of any wounds or hurts or damage that the spirit of rejection has done in your life. We're going to ask the Lord, and you're going to do this. You're going to say, Lord, restore my soul, restore my soul. Remember Psalms 23, David says, he restores my soul. Remember I said that rejection is an attack against your soul, your mind, your emotions, and your will. And so we're going to ask God to restore our soul. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to build your faith against the spirit of rejection by meditating on scriptures that tell you who you are in Christ. Now, if you need those scriptures, you can email me at fcrop, K-R-O-P-P, 1948, at gmail.com, and I'll send you what I call my in Christ scriptures that you can confess on a regular basis. And then you're going to thank him for setting you free when I finish praying uh, this prayer over you and taking authority over this spirit of rejection, and over the stronghold of rejection. So uh, if if you're ready to go, I'm ready to go too, and I'm just going to lead you in a prayer, and I'm going to pray over you, okay? First, I just want you to follow me in a prayer, and I want you just to say these words. Say, Jesus, come on, just say that now. Jesus, I thank you that you were rejected so I could be accepted that you on the cross defeated the principalities and the powers and the evil spirits that would come against me. I thank you that you destroyed the works of the devil, that you destroyed uh, the principalities and powers. You triumphed over them through the cross. And I thank you for the cross today through which I will be set free and I will destroy the stronghold of rejection. And now Jesus... I renounce, now say this after me, I renounce the spirit of rejection and I command you to leave my life right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to pray over you. Father, I take authority and I tear down right now that stronghold of rejection that's been hurting my brothers and sisters that's been controlling and manipulating them and causing them to see them different than you see them. 
God, I take authority over that right now, that spirit. I command that spirit to leave them right now in Jesus' name, and I tear down the stronghold. I pray and I pray you'll pull down every thought, you'll expose every thought, every ideology, every imagination that's in them that exalts itself against the knowledge of who they are in Christ. I take authority by the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus Christ. It says they overcame him, the devil, by the word of their testimony, the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives even unto death. So Father, I take authority right now, and I pray in Jesus' name, and I pronounce freedom from the spirit of rejection over everyone that's watching right now. I, and in, in Jesus' name, I pray now that you would come, Holy Spirit, and that you would heal them, heal them in the wounded areas, heal them. Come, Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of healing, and I ask you to come and heal. You, the, Jesus said that you, he was anointed to heal or bind up the brokenhearted, and I pray right now for that anointing to go forth in Jesus' name that will heal them of their hurts and wounds in their emotions, in their soul, in their mind, their emotions, and their will. I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus. And now, Lord, I ask you to restore their soul. Lord, as David said, he restores my soul. I ask you to restore their mind, their emotions, and, and will, and bring them into alignment with the truth of God's word that will set them free. Give them a desire, give them a, mo a motivation to, to begin to confess who they are in Christ and begin to reprogram their thinking processes to say, I'm not a reject. I'm a son and daughter or a daughter of God. I am a child of the King. I am more than a conqueror. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I am the blessed of the Lord. God's favor surrounds me like a shield. Lord, I pray that over them right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. We'll put amen in the chat or praise the Lord or thank you, Jesus. All right, before I close this video, I have a couple of things I want to just uh, announce. And, and now in the next session, we're going to talk about the whole area of the spirit of rejection only in relationship to your self-image, how you see yourself and what you need to do to, to develop or understand that you have a new image in Christ, okay? So you won't want to miss that next video. But let me just uh, make one a couple of announcements. And one is, again, that on Saturday, July 23rd, at the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, we're having a half-day seminar called Activate, where you're going to activate the greater one who lives in you. You're going to activate who you are in Christ, and you're going to activate your love for people that you encounter every day. So you can click up. There's a uh, in the chat. There's a link there where if you click that, you can go immediately and register for it. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, go down and click on the link below, and you can register on Eventbrite for that uh, for this seminar. Again, it's going to be from from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday, July 23rd. Make sure you mark your calendar if you live anywhere in this area or you even want to have people that are already signed up that are flying in just to come to this half-day seminar. You can, we just welcome you. We'll look forward to seeing you at that. Now here, I wanted to make a big announcement. My big announcement is that my new book called One Simple Act of Obedience is now out and is now available. It'll be, uh, you can pre-order it on um, Amazon. If you go to Amazon and look for my name, Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P, -P, or put in One Simple Act of Obedience, uh, you can get a copy of my book. In this book, it talks about the secret to seeing God work to your life in your everyday life, where you're going to see God do supernatural things through your life and touch the lives of other people. Uh, it, it's, I wrote this book this last year, and it's just now come out. Uh, it'll be active on June 28th, but you can pre-order the book. Uh, go again to Amazon.com. I'll, I'll try to leave a link there in the chat for you to go to Amazon if you'd like and purchase the book, and uh, you'll be blessed when you read it, guaranteed. All right, well, I just want to say, uh, thank you for watching these videos, and not only just thank you, but I'm just, it's a privilege for me to want to be able to help you in your walk with the Lord. This is our Overcoming series, and uh, again, make sure you tune in to the next session. We're going to continue to talk about 
overcoming the spirit of rejection from the aspect of your self-image. So look forward to talking to you in the next session. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I want you to know before I close that God loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.